Hello, this is John, and today we'll be reading We Must Bring 7 Billion People Back to God, given on Sunday, December 21, 2014. True Mother gave a Sunday service message in Las Vegas. My beloved children, blessed children of the Unification Church, ambassadors for peace and members of the clergy, I'm delighted to see you. Today we are celebrating Christmas. When we celebrate Christmas, we should think about God's providential history and God's heart. Whenever I think about God's providence, my heart is heavy. In the world there are parents and they celebrate their children's birthday. They hope their children will grow and be healthy and be blessed. They pray for their success. If that's the case with earthly parents, what was the case with God's heart when he created the universe? He had a dream and a hope for the universe. When God created human beings, he was full of that dream. He was so excited. We learn from the book of Genesis that God wanted to give human beings complete authority. He wanted them to grow well, but what happened? The mistake that Adam and Eve made was so incredible. It brought such terrible suffering to human beings and to God. Human history became a history of suffering and grief. But God could not abandon humankind. God has been searching for and longing for human beings. You, as children of God, have you ever felt that kind of pain? How could he abandon human beings? God led the providential history of restoration through indemnity to enlighten fallen humankind. God's pain is a field of bitter sorrow. Human beings are so ignorant. God had to raise them up. Through the Bible you know that it took 4,000 years to send the Messiah. God nurtured the people of Israel as a chosen nation over the course of not 40 years or 400 years, but for 4,000 years. Although God is the king of all kings and the owner of the cosmos, he lived such a sorrowful, painful existence, but he could not help but try and try again to recover human beings. Two thousand years ago, the people of Israel wanted to find the unfallen lineage. God wanted to send his begotten son, Jesus. But until he could, how many ordeals did God have to suffer? You clergy members must have read the Bible many times. Have you ever really comforted God's heart? God finally sent his begotten son. But what was what was this cross that he had to bear? Why was this begotten son killed? To have this happen after 4,000 years of preparation, do you really understand what it means? You ministers who are here, it was humankind's mistake. God's heart was full of bitter sorrow. People in the world are celebrating at Christmas time with joy. However, how many people really understand the situation of God? When I really think of it, my heart is painful. We should become children who are able to comfort God's heart. I'm sorry that I cannot control my emotions. I already said before, we are the people who know true parents. But Jesus, who came 2,000 years ago as a begotten son, should have met the begotten daughter. The Roman Empire was already prepared to be the realm of kings. It was already prepared to enable Jesus' method, message to be spread throughout the world. But 2,000 years of suffering have passed since then. Jesus promised that he would return, and he promised the Feast of the Lamb. That means he wanted to become the true parent that gives new life and resurrects fallen humankind as God's children. That's the providence God wants to carry out. 
Yet for 2,000 years there were a lot of problems in Christian history. They could be settled only in the 16th century. That's when the Bible was translated to English and to other languages. And that's how Christianity could spread. Christians wanted to be free from the conventional norms and the Pilgrim Fathers of America wanted to be free from their country, especially from their national religion and they wanted to come to a new world. They thought of God first, before they built homes for themselves. First they built a church, then for the sake of future generations they built a school, and then finally they built their own homes. That's the indemnity course that humankind should follow. But as human beings, they made a lot of mistakes. Democracy came from Christianity, but communism also came from Christianity. However, God promised to send the Messiah, the Lord of the Second Advent. God continued his preparations to send the Lord of the Second Advent. It started from the Roman Empire and on to England. The British Empire was so huge, it was said that the sun never sets on it. It expanded with the Bible. It created a Christian cultural sphere. Its purpose was to receive the Lord at the Second Advent. What we have to understand is that we are fallen human beings who could not align with God. We did not have a clear center. We have a lot of hidden stories. Still, God sent the Lord of the Second Advent whom he had prepared. Through many difficulties, finally the true parents of humankind were sent. There are many problems in the world, religious problems, racial problems, and more. But no one can solve the problems. Can they be solved by the President? Can they be solved by the United Nations? They tried. They could not solve these problems. They can be solved only by true parents whom God loves. They can solve these problems. Do you understand? Furthermore, today, throughout the world, there are four major religions. But God has been leading the providence centered on Christianity. Jesus said that he was the only begotten Son of God, and he talked about father-son relationship. But in order for him to be the parents of humanity, there need to be a mother as well as a father. We know that. That is why the providential history of restoration through indemnity took 6,000 years. You have to know this. The clergy must know this. Christians today still live in the Old Testament age and the New Testament age. We are living beyond the completed Testament age and in the era of Chanilguk. We need to share that with the world by bringing others out of the Old and New Testament ages. Can you imagine how awesome this statement is? Please do not forget that you share in a position where you can attain happiness. Happiness grows the more you share. I told the Cranes Club that their lineage is like pure water, thanks to their parents having received the marriage blessing. And the fallen world is like muddy water. But even pure water can be muddied. You should bring seven pe billion people back to God. You need to educate people about true parents. That's why you became blessed families. Do you understand? You have to take that responsibility. How could nations fight if they were dedicated to one set of parents? How could they be focused only on themselves? Only when you are centered on true parents can you really prosper. There are many unifications. But if you move forward with one great goal, with your brothers and sisters, you can be great. Do you want to do that? True Parents' motto is to live for the sake of others. 
If you can do that, you can unify the world. You can be a true parent as well. Then we can build the kingdom of heaven on earth. If you want to do that, you should work very hard. You also need to become tribal messiahs to restore your families. That should not be a very big job. True parents are trying to restore the 7 billion people of the world. You can be patriots. You should become the kind of children who participate in this historic world. Then your life will be very honorable. Just keep the frame of mind that the lives of 7 billion people are in your hands. How can you be comfortable knowing this? You should do your very best. You should practice the words that you already believe. I hope you can understand and act upon this. Let us release our heavenly parent, true parents, and Jesus Christ from their bitter sorrow. We should become victors. We should not live only for our life on the earth. Rather, we should become victors for our eternal life in the spirit world. I hope you can be the kind of people who can will do that. If you can, you will be remembered for eternity. This video is a production of the School of the White Crane. My name is John Brooker, and you can communicate with me through commentary on this video or through my Gmail listed here. Also, please share this video with friends and family and on social media. May God richly bless you.